Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. So I bid on this car on a public auction and I won it for $1,555. And if you read uh, the comments on Reddit that I've been receiving, I way overpaid for this car. So in my previous video, I mentioned that uh, I won this auction and it was 12 hours from home. Actually, it was only about 11 hours from home, but I had to travel 11 hours to pick this car up and uh, it was a, a hairy trip. So all in, this took me 47 hours, one vacation day that I had to burn, and 13 hours of sleeping in my truck uh, to get this, this car. So that 47 hours included all the time that I was, I was sleeping, you know, stopping for gas, eating, all those kinds of things. So was it worth it? Uh, ultimately, you know, the trailer cost me $123 to tow it there and bring it back. And part of that was they wanted $500. Uh, and by they, I mean U-Haul. They wanted, it was about $550 to pick the trailer up in Sacramento, drag it back down here to Phoenix. And it was only $123 to rent it for two days uh, and tow it up there and bring it back with me. So I decided to go that route. With bidding on it at auction at $1,555, plus the fees brought it to about $1,700, the trailer for $130, and then the gas for $350. Uh, that puts me just under $2,200 for this car. Did I pay too much for it? If it was local, I would say no. Being that I had to go and grab it, I'd say yes. But uh, doing it for the story, not the glory, so to speak. So uh, I'm definitely into this maybe about $500 more than I would like to, which again is about the cost of going to get it uh, in general. So, uh, But I do have big plans for bringing this thing back to life. But let me go through the trip that I had to go and get this car. I mean, it was not not an easy trip. Before I go into that, if this is your first time tuning in, please click that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. So the trip uh, all in was, I mean, it was a beautiful trip. It was terrifying. It was uh, soul searching. It was everything you could possibly imagine. But uh, you would imagine 47 hours in the, in the car is, is quite a long time. And now a lot of people are going to say, why did you not just ship the car down? Uh, you would have been better off just shipping it. Is you're saying, well, it's about what the gas prices are. But the actual real number is more about $700 and I just didn't want to pay $700 to ship this thing and I figured yeah I'll just go for it on a road trip uh, how bad could it be and, and I'll grab it myself so uh, all in I wasn't going to pay $700 to ship this car I bid on it at an auction it was up in Sacramento it's 11 hours away I got to figure out how to get it I'll just go and pick it up that was my mindset uh, so that's what I did now I left Thursday and uh, I left about three o'clock in the afternoon and it took me forever about three hours almost to get out of Phoenix it was brutal but that wasn't really a huge deal to me because I only planned on driving about four hours, five hours uh, before I was going to sleep for the night. Anyhow, I, I'd worked all day, so I'm not going to truck through the night uh, by no means. So I, I got about three hours. I trucked up to Cabazon, California. I, I slept up at a place called Canyon Lanes. It was next to Morongo Casino, and uh, it was actually a really great place to sleep. They had a nice bright lit uh, place to, to hunker down for the night. So that's what I did. I, I had blackout curtains for the truck so I could park in a really nice well-lit area, black everything out, sleep for the night, and that was really actually a pretty comfortable night's sleep. I got about six hours of sleep there, and uh, I woke up about uh, two or three in the morning and uh, just started driving again. So uh, I got all the way up to Sacramento. Uh, it was actually a beautiful trip from Cabazon all the way up to Sacramento. Uh, really nice, just wide open. Uh, areas, but beautiful rolling hills. Uh, ultimately, it was just a really, really beautiful trip. I was able to get through LA without any traffic because I got there around like five in the morning, I think, four or five in the morning. On Friday so I was able to really just skip through all that rush hour traffic worked out perfectly now when I got up there to pick this car up I got up to Sacramento and I was gonna do a lot of filming there but quickly realized that the uh, county workers weren't super uh, big fans of YouTube filming I mean they didn't say anything but I could tell it wasn't really uh, their thing they were giving me a lot of grief about the fact that I went up there with a trailer anticipating it to start because they listed it as a wreck even though they listed it as a wreck but a wreck that ran so uh, I, I knew that I would be able to drive it up on the trailer or had the best guess that I would be able to drive it up on the trailer. Sure enough, one of their guys in the yard fired it right up and I was able to drive it up on the trailer. Now, a bunch of guys from work were telling me that I should have just drove it uh, back home. 
And that was actually a plan that I was thinking about. I was going to spend 350 bucks on a plane ticket, fly up there, get a temporary permit and just drive it home. I am so lucky and happy that I did not do that because after I left Sacramento, I drove through, kid you not, uh, it was about 50 mile an hour winds, up to 90 mile an hour gusts is what the app told me when I was driving. And I believe it, it was a headwind. My gas mileage went down to under, it was about eight miles per gallon uh, down from before that I was getting close to 11. So, and on the way down with the empty trailer, I was up to 13. So uh, that headwind just crushed my gas mileage. And I was driving down the road and I, the first couple tumbleweeds that I hit scared me quite a bit, but I just realized they were blowing up. And it was kind of fun to drive and it was just poof, 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 as you're hitting these things and they're just blowing up, going around uh, your, your truck. So I'm driving, I gained a bunch of confidence. Then I had a tumbleweed, I kid you not, it had to be five foot tall blew out in front of me and it just spread right across my entire grill. Cut out my lights, everything. I couldn't see anything. I, if I drove like that for more than a few minutes, my radiator would have overheated because I had no airflow coming through. Scared the crap out of me. I, I actually thought that maybe something would have poked through the radiator. It was, it was bad. I didn't really film getting out to get it off because the weather was so terrible. I had to pull over in an unsafe area that was like a narrow shoulder with cars coming up behind me that you know could barely see because it was raining and it was just really bad situation so i had to get out clear that off real quick and just get back on the road so traveling through those winds crushed me it was brutal uh, i got maybe about four or five hours into that uh, and i had about eight hours total to get back home and i was just it, it, it crushed me from midnight till about five in the morning i couldn't find anywhere to get a cup of coffee which was driving me insane uh, so i just finally found a burger king parked there, took a nap for an hour, waited for him to open, grabbed myself some breakfast, back on the road, and I got back home. So all in, it wasn't really a bad deal. Uh, you know, again, I saved money on, on shipping. It was a, certainly a story. Now, another interesting note, if you've ever gotten pulled over, you'll know the classic move of the cop pulls up right up onto your bumper and starts running your tags or doing whatever they're gonna do right before they hit the lights on you. And when you're towing a Crown Vic, I don't know if it's just the exhaustion of towing for so long or what, but I'll tell you how many times I couldn't even count that I looked up in the mirror. The speed of immediacy of like, oh no, I'm getting pulled over to, oh, you're an idiot, it's your own car, uh, was, was pretty actually comical. I chuckled every time it happened, but um, it certainly caught me a, a few times where I was like, oh, oh no, but um, you know, just part of the uh, pitfalls of towing your own car. Probably on those trailers, you probably get that, like somebody's tailgating me feeling quite a bit with any car, but with a crown vic naturally you feel like you're getting pulled over so what kind of shape is this car in uh, that's the big question and the answer is really great shape it's been running this whole time i've been filming and it's very quiet no ticks the damage didn't make it past any of the front end stuff this corner is a little bit maybe a little bit bent up where the fender uh, attaches but ultimately it's actually in really good shape uh, i should have no problem reattaching parts to the front end here it's going to need a hood a fender a bumper uh, and then this header panel, which is a fiberglass, is all destroyed, and a grill. So those parts is, is what this thing needs. Otherwise, it's in great shape. Uh, it really doesn't even need paint beyond these parts that are going to be going on here. The car has about 97,000 miles on it. And uh, what I didn't know when I bid on this car was how many hours were on the idle hour meter. And most of these cars you see online are hovering around four to 5,000 hours. Some you'll see down to like 3,000 hours in that 100,000 mile mark. So it has 100,000 miles on the odometer, or 97,000 miles, and that's what you would expect to see. So I was really crossing my fingers, hoping to see like 2,500, I would have been doing backflips, thinking like, this thing is great, I got a, an awesome deal on it. When I fired it up, because it wasn't in the picture, so I had no idea what, what those hours were, when I fired the car up and I saw 354 hours, blew my mind, absolutely astonished that I was able to pick up a car with 343 hours on it, uh, really quite incredible. If you look at these other cars that are on the market around the three to 4,000, some in the $5,000 range, there are 100,000 miles with 3,000 to 5,000 hours on that hour meter, which that can be almost another 100,000 miles on that motor. So those cars call it 200,000 mile motors. This one's just over 100 with those hours associated with it. So really a steel powertrain wise, this thing should be in great shape. All of this cosmetics is something that can be done really cheaply. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to repair this thing and I'm going to do kind of a good, better, best comparison of how you could pick something up like this and do it extremely cheap. 
which was my original intention. Stick with me on that one. Or an insurance job. If you wanted an insurance job, this thing, how much you know it might cost to do that, or what's going to be like the better option, which is the way that I'm going to go. And the reason for that is when I bought this car, I really only had a plan of going to the junkyard, picking up these parts. I can get these parts for 300 bucks. So that was what I was going to do. But after I bought it, I decided to, while well, I have this YouTube channel, I was going to reach out and see if I can grab a sponsorship uh, to help me kind of push this thing along. And one thing is, as a YouTube consumer, one thing that kind of annoys me, and I see a lot of it, is people not telling you whether something is sponsored or not. And I'm not saying that I think everything is sponsored, because I don't think it is. But there's a lot of times you watch stuff and you think, I bet you that was sponsored. And again, maybe it wasn't. So I'm going to be incredibly transparent with you guys about this whole build series and what it cost me to build, what it might cost you to build if you were to do it a certain way. And then I'm gonna show you exactly what I got parts list wise, what was sponsored so that you can see, again, I just wanna show you guys and be very transparent about that. So uh, I wanna do this in a manner that somebody could watch it and learn and say, oh, I could do this myself if you're not gonna get a sponsorship, which feel free to go ahead and try to get a sponsorship. It takes about two years to uh, build a channel to get a sponsorship like this. So uh, if you have the time and, and effort uh, to do something like that, I certainly encourage it. Building a YouTube channel is incredibly fun. It just takes a lot of time. So who is the sponsor that I picked up? It is Summit Racing, and that is huge. I mean, Summit Racing is a, a brand that is widely known and respected uh, across the car community. Performance parts, uh, actually, to be honest with you, when I started researching parts for this car, body panels, uh, I didn't even realize that Summit uh, offered those parts and pieces until I started looking around and, and I found them on their website and I said, wow, that's, that's awesome. I, I love Summit. So I'll reach out and see if they would like to sponsor this vehicle. Their response, which was the funniest, and, and I love companies that have a little bit of personality behind them, their response was absolutely awesome. They had apparently watched one of my older videos or my last video where I announced that I had bought this car and I said, you know, I'm going to add this car to my channel. It's not necessarily controversial. While I do think that a lot of people will think it's controversial, the money that I have into this car up front. Uh, but, you know, I basically said it's not going to be a con controversial thing on my channel, but it certainly will be with my wife. And that was kind of all I had alluded to on that video. So Summit Racing's response to my request for a sponsorship for the panels and parts to put this all back together was, and I quote, if you're willing to drive 12 hours to get a banged up Crown Vic and risk the wrath of your wife, I think I can swing 750 bucks of crash parts to help you fix it which and i, I got a, a big chuckle out of that I, I, again i love uh, companies that have a little bit of uh, a personality behind uh, the people there so i appreciate that response a ton i think that's hilarious uh so and my wife is is relatively okay with this it's we're still got to put it back together but ultimately she's on board with this purchase so uh again i'm just going to take you guys through and show you a little overview of this car uh, the engine bay is absolutely filthy. I mean, it's, it needs to be washed. I do want to clean this engine bay up uh, real nice. It's just, just filthy from, well, eight years of, of being in service and clearly never being sprayed down once, uh, which no big deal. But belts and everything, it looks like they're, they're in good shape. The motor is it's really quiet. I'm very happy with that. Uh, the battery I thought was dead, but it turned out the terminals were all just incredibly loose. So I just had to tighten that all back down. Uh, and the battery seems to be taking the charge just fine. Uh, so the engine bay is, is quite all right. The oil filter looks brand new, so I'm thinking the oil was just changed. Now the interior is actually in really good shape. It's dirtier than what the photos looked like. So uh, moral of the story is if you're looking at a car and you think the photos are going to tell you exactly what it looks like cleanliness-wise inside, that is certainly a little bit deceiving. So these seats are definitely a little more uh, filthy than what I thought they were. I'm gonna get them shampooed and get them cleaned up. They should come out pretty well. I think it's just dirt. I don't think there's any like grease or anything. So uh, it's just, just dirty from use. The floor mats, I will toss those out and uh, get new ones probably just because they're cheap enough. There's no sense in keeping old, beat up, dirty, disgusting floor mats, which a lot of the stench probably is in those. The dash itself is actually really clean. Uh, it's in really good shape, so I have no problems with that. Uh, now, the trunk, it came with so much garbage in here. The lights that are in there are actually what I use to tow the, the car on the way home, and then the rest of everything else is just garbage. I, I always like to put extra brake lights on those trailers just because they, are, uh, they help you safely tow. Everything suspension-wise seems like it's in good shape although there are some remnants of tumbleweeds 
in the suspension and the A-arms from my trip back. But, uh, you know, again, the tires do have some life left on them, so I don't need tires right away, which is nice. So guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Please follow along as I fix uh, this Crown Vic. I don't have a nickname for it. I keep thinking Vicky, but I'm not going with that because everybody else does. So uh, I don't know what the nickname is going to be on this thing, but uh, ultimately I, I do appreciate you guys tuning in. So please click that subscribe button down below for future videos. Remember likes go a long way to help support the channel and follow me along as I go through and fix this thing up, get it back to being roadworthy, and get it through the uh, process here in Arizona of the salvage title inspection, show you guys how that whole thing works. I'm not super worried about it. The frame is fine. Uh, it's really just a matter of, of getting these panels replaced. I don't even need to paint it to get past that inspection, which I don't even intend on doing until after the inspection. Uh, so uh, stay tuned and I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much and we will see you guys next time.